I will call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for okay. Tuesday and then, very helpful and then it can help just, you know, <coughs> look at the <coughs> Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. All right. A call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2016. Is there anyone here to speak to something that is not on the agenda? All right. Moving right along to our meeting minutes for the April 19th meeting. Did everyone have a chance to look at them? Yep. yep. Yes. Any errors, omissions, changes? Nope. Did see a motion to approve the meeting minutes from April 19th? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? No. All right. Uh, oh, Chet will abstain. He was not present. Good catch, Chet. Um, no ANRs. So moving along to new business, site plan approval for 5 Chapman Ave, Michael Bear. Come up to the podium and tell us what you're doing, what you're planning on. Uh, there's some, yeah, you can okay. close that while I'm up. Hold on. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Supplemental information being provided by the applicants. Okay. property. I did have a prior site plan approval for a restaurant and a bed and breakfast on the second floor. Um, that site plan had expired. There has been some alterations to it and um, that's what you see before you. So plans for a restaurant at that location. Can I confirm that you're Michael Bear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And Five Chapman, as you just stated, that is in fact your residence yes. as well. Yep. Um, and so, I was trying to figure out from the drawing, is this all indoor? Is there a, an outdoor there, component there, or? There, there is uh, outdoor seating um, that is accompanied by it, yes. Uh, okay. That was approved by the liquor license. Okay, and so look, maybe if you come over and show us, I'm just trying sure. to figure this out. Yeah, I mean, the key is small. So yeah. So on here. Go ahead and have uh, bigger colored ones for this. There may be larger ones that were filed that oh, just didn't okay, get to okay. us. I don't know. All right, so this is a patio area on the yep. side of the house. Okay. That area is licensed, and so is this. Okay, is there is this for seating or is this? Th there's okay, for this seating. patio for seating there too. Yeah. This is all indoors, right? This is all indoors. Okay. And this is the only area that's licensed, so not the entire building. Okay. So this is the this rear component is the commercial section. Yep. To the mixed use building. Okay, and so this is all my the residence. My private residence, yes. And but there's a separate kitchen and everything, yes. right? It's all yep. everything takes place in that area yep. outside there. Okay. Still waiting for approval, and as you'll see, like from the health department. Um, my plans have not gone before her because I'm still settling up with the structural like, changes that have to take yeah, you can go back, back to the mic there. just oh, so we can record it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just that the microphones they don't they're not projecting in the room, but they do pick up audio for the video. So, so yes, the what will be the actual restaurant is vacant space at this time. Um, the plan starts to go before the board of health. Um, at the moment, I'm waiting for my architect and the building inspector to settle on some issues in regards to the structural changes of the building to make it commercial use. Okay. And I do have architect's plans for the restaurant, which are in that compiled packet as well. Okay. So there's a line drawing of the restaurant plans. Right. With the equipment that I already own. Okay. Is your main intended entrance from Union or Chapman? Um, actually both. So there's an entrance, there's a sidewalk entrance on Chapman and I had an accessibility to a parking lot that is behind me off of Union Street. So there is a 42 space parking lot directly abutting my property. I had a question. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I was on the planning board when we gave you an original uh, yes. permit. Yes. You had a bunch of motorcycles back there at the time. Is that where your kitchen is going to be? Where yes. your restaurant's going to be where those motorcycles yep. were in the back there? Yeah, my, what used to be my former, former motorcycle shop display. I think, the, uh, I remember, if I remember correctly, the biggest concerns at the time was the parking on Chaplin Avenue by the fire department. Yes. 
Because like I said, like you said the trucks couldn't get through there. Uh, if you had parking on both sides, if I remember right. Well, there is no. There's only parking on one side of the street as it exists now. Okay. Um, and then part of that site plan approval process, the planning board requested that I tear down about a 550 square foot of garage to access the parking lot behind me. So and, that, and that, so that and then, alleviate uh, the, the tension on the parking on the street. There was also some concern with uh, the guy in the back. You were, you were trying to get, make some kind of readiness for, for parking spaces in that, in that uh, yes, uh, parking lot. How is that, how is that working out? Um, it, it has since changed ownership, the building. So at one point I was renting parking spaces from him. Um, the change of ownership, I think at this point I don't have to lease the spaces. I have an easement to the property now that's needed to the property um, for use of the parking lot. And, I, and then I am downtown business owner, so I am exempt from parking regulations as well. I'm hoping for pedestrian traffic. I'd like to be the, a neighborhood spot. That's really what I'm after. I mean, the, if you look at the plans, it only seats 32 to 34 people as they exist right now. There may be subtle alterations once I go through the health department, um, you know, depending on what you may require or not require from me. But the capacity is low. I'm not looking for a super busy bustling business just a, a little small intimate place what about um deliveries what do you anticipate for that sort of stuff there's already delivery trucks on the street every day for shelburne falls yeah so there's always the food service group truck or like on um, chapman Avenue already what, but what do you expect for your restaurant minimal deliveries you know one day a week yeah so during uh, during business hours or in the evenings or well, I'm, i'll be open in evenings i plan to be open in evenings maybe a saturday and a sunday during the day but yeah, delivers will be during the day, during, you know, business hours. And like I said, the, the, the food trucks now are small. I don't know if, you know, it won't be an issue. Yeah, and there's space there in front for loading and unloading or in yeah, the driveway? Yeah, I have a driveway access that goes right back to the place. And then I also have a four-foot-wide sidewalk that runs the full length of the house as well. Okay. So it should be easy enough for them. Am I reading correctly here that you've had your liquor license approved? Yes. And I, there were a bunch of concerns in here from the health department. Yes, and that was because I haven't brought my plans before her, um, mm -hmm. and that's because I've been uh, trying to navigate with the building inspector over some issues that arose. So my architect in here settling those. Once that's completed, I will bring um, the plans to her for review. Okay, so she hasn't seen the plans yet. It's under. And when do you think that's gonna? I, well, actually, I should have a response in the next week. So Your, the plans will be complete to her next week. That I'm hoping that I have an answer from the building department within the next week, and then I can take the plans to her, yes. Um, you said open weeknights and then maybe weekends during the day. Are you yeah. planning on doing seven days, do you think? No, or? No, no? No, no. I still live there, so it's my residence as well. Like, yeah. I'm not looking to, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking like a Thursday, you know, Friday, Saturday, you know, type of thing. like a Thursday night, Friday night, maybe a Saturday, Sunday brunch, that kind of a thing. But What kind of hours do you think you're planning on doing? Oh, I would do, I'm thinking, yeah. you know, 5 to 10-ish, somewhere in that range, 5 to 11. Um, like I said, more of a neighborhood, you know, little hangout place. <coughs> One of the other health departments that was the smoker. Yeah, I had some concerns in regards to my smoker. I did uh, send a little bullet point list in the, uh, for the smoker that I currently own. Um, I will gladly remedy anything that she, the, the, 12.95D talks about the adequacy of methods for disposal on the site plan approval criteria. You commented here that you're going to be using trash barrels with lids attached to wheels. Are these just the standard residential green ones that yep, everyone has? That everyone has. And, and, and that's going to be adequate for several restaurants in town that use them. So I'm assuming yes. <laughs> My answer to that would be yes. Um, yeah, and there does. again, I mean, I'm, I'm having a limited menu in a small place, so I'm not expecting a lot of waste. I'm really not. you talk about the smoke issue as well which the, the health inspector uh, raised as an issue she had some and concerns, yes. you've been smoking uh, at your residence which sounds weird <laughs> you, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> for over three years three you years. say and with, with that unit with the unit that I hope to use for the restaurant so have you actually spoken to any of the neighbors oh yeah absolutely we we're actually pretty excited about the project so, so with, uh, we'll get back to the trash they also have concern on how the trucks will get access to the back and how the 
how you will keep vermin and other animals from getting into those barrels. Because you're not using a dumpster, right? I would prefer not to. Um, the, the, those trash containers on the wheels are easier to use. Um, I would roll them to either the curb on the Chapman side or the parking lot side behind me, depending upon where, they, where the trash company wants to pick it up. But there are, I mean, there's already dumpsters in the whole neighborhood getting emptied. I mean, I think there's one behind Snap Fitness that gets emptied at 4.30 in the morning. Right, but her concern was the lids. Are they going to be secured enough for... I mean, a fenced area around it. So it would be that morning I would have to get up. Like my trash, my residential pickup is in between like 8 and 8.30 every Monday morning. So yeah, I'd have to get up at 7.30 in the morning, unfence them, roll them to let them pick up. Okay. Is there a public bathroom in that design? I didn't see. There's it. two. So, yeah. And that's why I haven't been to the health department yet, because I'm still settling things with the building department in regards to. Um, yeah, so there'll be two bathrooms, handicap accessible. Um, Did you say handicap accessible just yes, yes, of course. In, in the entrances as well? Yes. Yep, the sidewalks, the entrances, everything's in Ramps. I don't need ramps because the building's at ground level. Grade. So, necessary. Um, you mentioned something had changed with respect to the parking lot in the back. You no longer have the leased spaces, is that right? The the property has since sold. So, okay. the new owner of the property. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's willing to rent them to me. Um, I, like I said, I have an easement, you know, onto his property now. So, um, it hasn't come in conversation with him. I mean, he knows that I'm opening a restaurant. Yeah. You know, and it hasn't, hasn't come up, so. I just want to reiterate, an inn is no longer any part of it. An inn, I-N-N. No, 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 no. As, that, as I was developing that project with an architect, it was getting a little too messy, and I was, you know, sacrificing too much personal space and compromising the structural integrity of the home. It was a romantic idea of a bed and breakfast, but its practicality was uh, a little... <laughs> How many people do you think you'll be able to seat? Um, as the plans sit now, uh, like 34 people. And there is some outside patio seating, which would bring me between, I don't know, 18 to 20 more people outside, weather permitting, obviously. And you said there are 42 parking spots outside. Yes. Just for a clarification, uh -huh. those 42 spots are in the lot behind your building that you have an easement agreement to, but you don't have a don't lease, have lease agreement. spots, right. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's willing to rent them, if, you know, but I, at this point, he and I just have a couple of things. Yeah. So. I think we have a... There's only uh, Tuesday nights, or like the busiest night in that parking lot, for the hours of that at my operation, that parking lot's pretty much empty. So we would have some minimum parking requirements, I think, for that number of occupancy. But I'm a little bit confused, Jessica. Are you saying that those, uh, without a lease, those won't qualify? Is, is that? I'm just trying to clarify the information. So okay. it sounds like there used to be a lease agreement with the former property owner, but the property has changed hands, and there's not a lease agreement in place now. So as effectively as it stands before you right now, there is no off-site parking because there is no lease agreement in place. But there is an easement that would allow that to happen in the future if the paperwork yeah, is there. Yeah, there's a handicapped walkway from that parking lot. Yeah, the handicapped So walkway. you're going to go through with the new owners? To I, 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 I can if that's what the, what the request is. I mean, you know. Well, I mean, part of our determination is whether we think there needs to be additional parking. I mean, the, mm -hmm. in the previous plan, I think they required a lease of four off-street parking spaces. Yes. It's downtown business, so it doesn't have to have a specific number, but we are still, you know, concerned with vehicular and pedestrian movement and that sort of stuff under the site plan approval, so we can still require some sort of off-site parking to sort of minimize the on-street parking, if that's something we think is important. Thirty-four people. I'd like you to be full. Hmm. Well, so with thirty-four, <laughs> and then you said that that's not counting the patio seating, though. Is that right? Another eighteen. Right. Another eighteen for that. I mean, think. Of, I think Galaxy. I'm just guessing is probably around the same seat capacity of around. Fifty. Fifty. Yeah. I would guess. I mean, it would seem to me. The rear patio is low. I mean, they've got a patio up front, and they have the bar, and they've got the restaurant. Right. 
So I'm guessing they're probably somewhere between the 40 to 50 capacity at Galaxy. Right. But they have parking right directly out front. Okay. Yeah. So. It's a tough call. I, I feel like it, it does need some minimal number, but I don't want to apply an undue burden. You're going to have people working for you, too, I would imagine. If you have 34 people sitting there having dinner, and you're going to have somebody the outside, so you're going to have to, what, hire two or three people, probably? Yeah, the employees will park in my actual driveway to my residence. So none of the employees will actually be, like, on. They won't be taking up the parking spaces on the street. Because um, I do my personal residence driveway is rather long. So it'll accompany the one or two employees that I have working for me. So we're looking at maybe 52, 53 with you. So have these numbers in any way changed since the original permit? Out of curiosity, when it was no. so that's what you told the board you expected then as well. Yeah. I think back then mm -hmm. I was looking for 36, uh, 34 to 36 pages. Yeah, but I can't recall. There was no rush valve. That was like a like a. It said like an the, the, an end. No, the previous says decision says 32 to 36. Yeah, 32 to 36. Okay. It wasn't 50. So I think maybe six. So just to for a point of reference, the the parking regulations in the zoning. If this was a restaurant that was being built on a new site without anything else on no. it, the requirements would be one for each four seats of total seating capacity plus one for each two employees on shift of greatest employment. So, so four 15, divided by 13. Yeah, it's some 12 to 15 somewhere, somewhere in there. Yeah. About 15 spaces. But yeah. there is on street parking on Union Street around the corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it seems that there is on street parking on one side of Chapman, on although I would want to, you know, I don't know if that's a true fact or not, but that's. Right. Now, am I being confused too? There was something about tearing down a garage? <clears throat> yes, I, I, initially when I came before the board for parking lot access in the rear, um, they requested that I tear off 500, roughly 50 square feet of building to create the easement and the egress. Right. So I have a handicap egress now for that in the parking lot behind me. Uh, that's access, it's not additional parking, it's it's flow through. Right. Okay, I understand now. And it concerns about trash storage and yeah, so right. the building came off because my building took up the entire rear width of my lot. Right. So there's there was no place for a pass through yep. to the lot behind me. And the the rear lot back there, have you had discussions with the new owner about the possibility of leases? We did, but we discussed the four. Okay. The original traditional four spaces that I was originally approved for. Um, if you require that, then I will, uh, I can uphold that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he'd be willing, I have not had that conversation with him in regards to renting more. Yeah. Um, I mean, did and I would actually feel a little uncomfortable with that because it's, you're, you're asking, I mean, I'm in downtown business zoned to be renting 15 parking spaces for another property owner. You know, Coco doesn't have to do that. Galaxy didn't have to do that. You know, I. I yeah. No, I mean, I understand. Know, so I, I mean, I'd be happy with the four because I've already con I've already conceded to that number. But fifteen spaces in someone else's property seems a little excessive to me. Right. Well, there's a reason that downtown business doesn't have the same parking requirements, yeah. but it, it does still have the same concerns, and it all yeah. depends on where it's located. And, and, I, and I would make a concession. Various other I, factors. I, I, I would agree to that concession. I'm struggling a little with that number. I do. Yeah. I do think that a minimum of four is required. I'm inclined, and we're looking at what, <coughs> another business. We, we just came up with a number somewhere between you know I don't know twelve and fifteen. Of what, right. So I, I think a meeting point is appropriate. I'm thinking maybe more like six. Do you think that'd be a possibility? I could address that with him. I mean, that's arbitrary by my decision. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, it, maybe it, it's marketing's going no matter what. It's going to be an issue there. I would rather see if he can get 12 or 14, but that's going to be a, a dream. That, yeah, that's, that's and, and yeah, be, and well, and also, I mean, you're, you're holding him to a, a, a standard for a different yeah, yeah. zone, which I don't know that we need to go that high. I mean, part of the problem with all of it, I think, is that whether you have four, six, eight, or 10, people are probably going to be inclined to park on Chapman Street, yeah. which. Well, well, actually, no, because the. I mean, the back of my building is kind of, uh, the back of my property is kind of be the face of the of the restaurant. That's sort so, of the main entrance. Um, I have two. I have a sidewalk on Chapman yeah, Avenue, and right. then one to that parking lot. And then, so it would be an advantage to have parking yes, there. Yes, and then there's um, and then there's also the Big E's parking lot there, and then there's one yeah. behind um, the Indian restaurant that I still think Big E's owns as well. There's a lot of parking 
on the back side of that building. So right. where we can't be condoning the I can't, and, and, and that's parking on Big E's property. Right. That's you can't, you can't yeah. use someone else. I, I There's I plenty of sure. on-street parking on Union Street, though. There's no yes. doubt about that. Okay, right. so I just want to make sure because I was a little, uh, it didn't quite make sense. Did you just say that the while both are accessible, both sides are accessible? You see the Chapman side as being sort of the main face. What's that for pedestrian? Tra uh, no, the rear. The Chapman the is the rear, so the main face is the Union. Yeah. Side. Can no, chat, all, you, all you can actually see for the restaurant on Chapman Ave is a four foot wide sidewalk to like a little tiny space in the back. All right, uh, so it's, face. More, it's more pedestrian friendly from the can, Chapman. Can you come show us on this drawing and where the, where the other entrance would be? Because I'm just having trouble. So oh, okay. I see so, the entrance so this, over this, here. This the, is the Chapman so, side, yeah, right? Yeah, so the sidewalk on Chapman Ave. Yep. It's long. It's right. over 100 feet long. Yep. Um, and comes all the way back into here. Now you do yep. walk through this licensed area. Yep. With the patio tables. Yep. This is the restaurant, and then here you come out the side door. This is all my driveway. So we were discussing like there's my trash yep. bins. You know they get rolled to the curb. This long driveway is where my employees would park. Where, where is, is the? That's the trash inside there, right? Uh, in, uh, it's inside fenced. It's fenced. It's fenced in area. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then there's a sidewalk. That goes straight through here. Yeah. So when you're staring at the at the back of the building, you can see this sidewalk coming down into the space. But so customers are going to be able to come in here and yes. go through the kitchen and. Uh, there's 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 walls. There's uh, if, walls. If you there it is. So if you are looking at it, this is the sidewalk coming down from okay. Chapman Ave. Yep. So you come into the door. Here's seating. So this is walled off. So there's, there's the handicapped bathroom, USX, and then here's the other entrance. This entire space is only 800 square feet. It's tiny. Yeah, it's not very big back there. No, it's, right. I'm basically doing a f food truck as far as, uh, <laughs> as far as the size of my kitchen. Yeah, this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. very I here. here. Yeah. here. But it doesn't yeah. quite line up. No, it doesn't. So if this. I'm just trying to oh, figure out. Oh, the scale's out. different for the size of paper. That's all. No, I know. I'm just trying I to figure I out where no, this I door. I did figure it out the other day because it took me time to yeah. leave it that way. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, this that way. Is this. This <laughs> yeah. is so this, this side door. This is this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the doors were backwards. Yeah. All right, so this is the door that goes out the sidewalk to Chapman Ave. Yes, and then the union. This unions, is the door. Yeah, yeah. Trash will be out here kind of in the fenced area yeah. and come in the entrance there. Sidewalk here. But yeah, okay. this is. Here. That's the fence. No, 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 no. This is the trash, isn't it? This is this. This right. is this. This is this. What's this? That's the fenced in area That's where the porch. The fenced in area. Yeah. Okay. And it's a porch? Well, no, no, no it's it's, a, it's it's driveway, oh, okay. grade level. It's only fenced in because um, I can I was approved for patio space on this side as well. I see. Oh, for okay. your liquor license. Yes. I see. Okay. okay. So you might have you might have seating over here. You yes. might not. Yeah. Okay. But so. From the orientation perspective, you're, there is sort of a, a logical entrance from that Union Street side. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, Do I head back on me? Yes, please. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you around. So, I mean, I guess that does alleviate some of the concerns about whether people are just going to park on Chapman anyway. Um, and then there, there's also there's an abandoned lot that abuts my property that has like another 20 spaces on that. But there again, that's someone else's property. Yeah, not, we like, can't use, not, use that. So how is the back lot accessed? Uh, Union Court. So right past oh, Snap okay. Fitness. All right. There's a. a I see. Union it's Court. not like they're driving through the site to get to that. Yeah, across the small lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, there certainly is on street parking down there. In by general, union. on Union, absolutely. And like I said, my intent is for pedestrian traffic as well. Like I want to be in the yeah. neighborhood, a little tiny. Um, I mean, that being said, I do think that it's 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 important to have some lot spots as well. Mm. Um, but I don't know where we want to fall on that number. It seems like he's willing to go with four. I'm not sure that there would be any more availability if we were to. Uh, push for more and I wouldn't want to put for too much because it, you know we want to be paying for each one of those spots every month we want to balance it meet the needs of the community and make sure safety needs are met yeah yeah but how can they get seven in there uh, that's up for him the property owner I, I I don't want to speak on his behalf I mean my at one point when I discussed with him when the egress was going in we discussed four um, 
that, that, that's the last sort of discussion. Like, you know, there was never a proper, with the four second property, so four I never had a lease. Okay. Shall lease. Um, hmm. Hmm. He's willing to, I mean, when I had, like, a verbal conversation, but it just, it never manifested into, like, an actual yeah. lease agreement for those yep. cases. Um, I mean, what do you folks think? Do, I mean, do you think that four spots in the lot is enough with the on street parking on Chapman and Union and yeah, foot pass traffic? Yeah, because if you go any more than that, you're putting a financial burden on the guy, I think. I modify to four as well. Anybody else have any thoughts? I still think it should be more. You think it should be more? Yeah. I don't think so. Just, right. put, just put a put on put on But I'm going to be outvoted, anyway, <laughs> so that's just my opinion. I mean, I could say he needs eight or ten, but you know. Well, I mean, I think he would prefer he had eight or ten too, just not have to pay for them. them. <laughs> so, that's the point. So that's you know, I mean, uh, it's unfeasible financially. And I mean, you want to keep it at four. Uh, our balance, but not so much that we're avoiding safety needs. The safety needs have to get met before okay. everything else. And I think four hits that number as a minimum. I'd prefer to see six, yeah. 15, right. but I think the four is a minimum. Yeah. Below that, I think it's a safety burden that we shouldn't apply. Sure. It's a bit arbitrary, I admit, but. Safety on behalf of the fire trucks access or safety on behalf of, what's the safety, I guess? Yes, would be my answer to that. The fire trucks? Yeah. Well, with the fire department. <coughs> they didn't well, there's already parking on that one side of the street. It's they didn't raise that as an issue. Right now, no, that that wasn't. Comments aren't there. Uh, I, know, I wonder what they did. They didn't do it this time, but they did it last time. Yeah. But I we have to look at the application. I mean, I, I understand where you're going, and that you've got sort of uh, the historical knowledge, but at the same time. I mean, who knows what's changed in the interim? And, and so, I mean, I, I would. I don't have a problem with the fire truck issue because the fire department didn't. Um, you've I mean, seen all their comments. The fire department didn't, they didn't respond. Have they comments. had comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think there was something. Yeah, the, the main concern was from the health department. That's just because she hasn't seen. She hasn't been brought before her yet. I mean, my my only concern with the parking is just you know trying to prevent Chapman from becoming overly congested and you know. Totally agree. Whatever, but. I think everyone sort of has that same interest, and if there's available parking somewhere else, that probably alleviates that, or at least limits it as much as there is going to well, be anywhere area, else well, in the downtown. downtown business. Street. You want to go to Louvier or someplace like that? Exactly. You, you got to find a spot there up on Hoyle Street or Maple right. Street, right. Street and walk. Right. It's it's, right. it's, it's so sort of it's inherent <laughs> to the downtown business, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just sort of just to make note that the downtown business zone pretty sure <coughs> ends at this property. This okay. is the last one. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is the last downtown business parcel on Chapman Ave. Gotcha. And then after that, it's residential. Right. Okay. And but that, it's not and residences right now, is that right? I have no residence abutting my property. I think you said 105 feet or something like that. Okay. It's the nearest residence. So that, but, that just, I'm just saying yep. that may make this different than yep. other downtown businesses that are kind of more in the heart of the downtown zoning district yeah. right rather than being sort of on the edge with a residential zoning district and that may be where some of that history in terms of requiring some right. off-street parking may have come from because it's kind of on the edge of the district um, would you be able do you think to get any sort of signage or something for those parking spots in the lot yeah. I, I would assume if I'm forced to be renting spaces from him, right. that would entitle me to put some signage on it, yeah. I would assume. Um, there again, that's up to the property owner, right. like what he'll concede, you know. I mean, I mean obviously, I, obviously, yes, if I was renting spaces, I would want signage on right. it, and I'd want the, you know, designated right behind my building, you know. Right. But, well, and obviously you have an incentive to encourage people to park over there. It's a better spot for you to have them coming in from. I think that makes sense. I mean. To me, I think if there's four, you know, marked spots in a lot right next to the building, it's a downtown business. There's on-street parking in the area. That I think that should be sufficient. Concur. That makes me comfortable on that front. Do we, do we feel okay with that? Check. 
Are you willing to reluctantly go along with that, or you <laughs> want to dig in your heels? I'm going to dig in my okay. heels. Okay. Um, can we move on to the smoker issue and see if anybody so has any? So, just to be clear, so it we seems that there's... anything. We're, I'm, I'm just moving along here to other issues. Okay. I think we... So you have, seems to have a 4-0 on that one condition. I'm just we... trying to keep track of potential right. conditions for yeah. the decision. Okay. So, okay. All right. And if... I'll be 4-1. So at least four spaces and hopefully... Well, we're not there yet. I'm okay. just trying to figure yeah. out where people feel, if we need yeah, to have more right. discussion about that or if we can try on the next issue. Um, <laughs> what are people thinking about the smoker? I mean, it, it seems like it was a big concern for the health department, but I also don't think the health department has really um, received much information um, yet from the applicant. And I think also, Jessica, will the health department have jurisdiction over that as part of absolutely. the restaurant, absolutely. right? So I mean, absolutely. She yeah. has to approve a, a, kitchen, entire operation, right? a kitchen plan right. before I can, so right. that's, I just hope that if she, when you work with her on a kitchen plan, it doesn't somehow impede this decision somehow. Right. But is there a preferred order of operations there typically? Is it best to have that done before this process? It depends on the applicant. I mean, my inclination with this, she, since he's been using a smoker and he hasn't had complaints yet, and clearly the health department has an idea of what the potential pitfalls are and possible solutions with a maintenance plan and things and like that. Yeah, and there's different styles of smoker, like I said, like in that, like the, typically they're all wood operated, right. mine's yeah. yeah. I mean, my inclination would be to do something similar to what they did in the last one, which is specifically state that he has to comply with board of health requirements. Right. But, I mean, we can even I have include, to I mean, right, she's right, not prove it but we can include, <laughs> yeah. we can exactly. include even specific mention of the smoker. Yeah, because um, she was looking for a remedial type. For exhaust system. Also. Right. The exhaust for And maintenance and, and things like that. But I think more than anything, she was looking for information from the applicant, which she hadn't gotten. So right. I'm hopeful that maybe this isn't, you know, as bad a scenario as she was anticipating. Yeah. I think on our end, mentioning it as you described covers, covers it. And then she can make her determination about that. But she also stated that she is requiring a smoke remedial system in place prior to any approval from her office. Yeah, that was yeah. several years ago though, wasn't it? System on no, it whether it meets our standards or not, yeah, that was September, September of 15. Um, and that and that memo was directed towards the building inspector, right. so yeah. that's like kind of an internal system. I, again, sort of just making clear where the jurisdictional boundaries are that you're concerned about uses that are happening inside the building, but not necessarily the systems in place inside the building. Right. And that's your jurisdiction to make sure that those uses happening inside the building aren't having an impact On to abutting place. properties right. and not impacting public health, safety, welfare. Right. <coughs> gotcha. So I would recommend against putting something specific about a remedial system, but acknowledging right. at least that that the smoke could create a nuisance and that it has to comply with the it has to be comply it has to yeah. comply with the right. department. Yeah, the, gotcha. the, the amount of smoke when it's actually uh, excuse me, when you're actually using wood chips for smoking, it's equivalent to like that of like a pellet stove. Like when it's does, a gentle soft like how, how does the smoking I mean is this something you're smoking during the day so that you have it prepared for you to yes. use that night or you Yes, I'd be smoking during the day so it'd be ready for dinner at night. Okay. Um I mean, does anybody else have any other thoughts about the smoker? No. I'm inclined to think that that's more in the health department's jurisdiction as well, but I'm happy to entertain questions. Or would you be would you would be using the smoker on a day of the, on, on the days that you're going to be on open? On the days that I'm going to okay. be open, correct. So it would be limited to that. Yeah. So yeah, I would assume on the days that I'm not open. Yeah. Unless it was for personal use and I was having a friend over or something, but yeah. <laughs> like I'm using it now, you know. So. Right. <laughs> Right, there is that fact too. Um, and then I think the only other thing the health department raised was with the trash and removal. We talked about. Which we've covered in a fenced area and that sort of thing. Um, and there again, at her discretion, if she wants it relocated somewhere else on the property, I'll apply, obviously. Right. I mean, that also sort of falls. I mean, we're concerned with sort of protecting it and keeping it enclosed, but if she wants it to move somewhere else as part of the health department regulations, that might. That impacts the site plan because you've approved it to be in a certain location. Right. But so. I mean, we can't very well. I mean, 
I don't know what the rules are as far as proximity of your dumpster to your I kitchen or anything no, like that. No, but I think so if it's within that general area, that that's fenced in, fenced in area, right. as long as it's within there, it's right. fine. But if it all of a sudden gets moved to a different right. part then of the site, then he's going to have to come back. Uh, I mean, hmm. I know it's a good site plan, but my previous site plan, that's what it was approved. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> all right. Does anybody else have any other questions or concerns about this from the board? I want to just ask a couple of quick ones here. Yep. Um, the the um, 12.9 site plan approval criteria talks about integrating your development into the existing landscape and design down there. Do you have any vegetative plans for the front? Or? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it was marked on the on the key. So yeah, there's a I have perennial gardens surrounding the whole property. Okay. Um, and actually, a, a lot of maple trees for as tiny as my lot is. I probably have the tiniest lot on the street. I have all the trees. What about lighting? <laughs> oh yeah, lighting. Lighting. Oh, lighting, yes. Um, I have exterior lighting, um, pole lamps around the house, um, exterior lamps at all the doorways. Um, and of course, what will be in the restaurant will have all the emergency lighting that's required by me with the building department. Coming from that Union Street lot, is that area all lit? There's street lights yes. there, right? Okay. Yeah, he has a pole for that. Up for that lot, for okay. That lot. And then I have exterior lighting on my building yeah. to establish the boundaries of where my property is, and then also um, will be a sign and a sign light out there. That okay. also have a nice uh, place. Good. You still have people living there when this restaurant's going to be uh, going on, or? Um, it's just it's a single family home. I do have a roommate. Yes, I do have a couple roommates. Oh, it's not going to be an inn or anything like no, that. No, it's not going to be an inn. No, the inn's off the table. There's no transient lodging there. Um, yeah. I guess that one fun. went by the wayside. Um, Anybody from the public here to speak on this? Do we, would you like to say something? Um, yeah, my name is Lisa Fusco. Here, why don't you come up oh, here okay. just so we can get at the microphone? Hello, uh, my name is Lisa Fusco, and uh, I live in Northampton. I live around the thing there, 130 Cross Path Road. Um, I've been friends with Michael for six or seven years, and he's, you know, kind of uh, metamorphosized with this process in terms of what he finally came up with. And this is the idea that I really fully agree with. So, um, and we're best friends. So um, I've been with him the whole way through this process. A couple of things just to clarify, either he forgot or you guys didn't know. With regard to the barrels, um, and I've owned commercial property here since 2002, have had to work with the building department, didn't have to do any site plan stuff, but. Um, yeah, in East Hampton. In East Hampton, yeah. And um, love the old mayor, love the current mayor. You know, really, uh, any issues that I ever had were immediately addressed. So uh, it's been a pleasure doing business here. And I still, I own Casey's Big Dog Saloon up the road. Um, with regard to the barrels, when I had my property on Main Street, I did their, their tall, lidded barrels that you see. They have a metal rod on the bottom where the truck can actually pick it up and bring it in. Um, these are very critter-proof. Um, I was a game warden for 20 years, <coughs> Mass Environmental Police. And I know how raccoons get in and squirrels get in. And the way they kind of hook over, and I don't know if it's the way they're balanced or their height, but they really are good at keeping the critters out. So I would feel comfortable with that. Um, with deliveries, um, he is right, you know, Shelburne Falls does get some deliveries, but a lot of our stuff, I'm gonna be helping him cook. Um, and we're, there's a, a place called the Restaurant Depot. They have about 40 locations throughout the country. It's cash and carry. Um, they have great meats there, um, they have a lot of produce, so a lot of our stuff is going to be making a weekly trip down there um, to do that. And uh, you do save a lot of money. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Pick's Place in Holyoke. I think it used to be called the locker room, but um, he's a friend of mine and he started going there just doing the cash and carry, saving $300 a week. He does a lot of food, a lot of business, but he's saving $300 a week. Uh, between there and probably Arnold's Meats, um, we'll just be doing it ourselves. And then for produce, again, we're small, so, um, and they're a minimum order. Cisco, I think, is $250 or $300. That they're not the kind of company that we're going to be big enough to meet their minimum requirements. So I really don't think there's going to be any big delivery truck issue. Um, uh, Galaxy also, um, Jessica, you had mentioned his um, seating. outdoor seating in the front and then his indoor. He does have a beer garden in back. I would say that's probably 30 people. So I, okay. I think he's a fair amount higher than what Michael's okay. is. Um, 
and uh, we, we need to show the health inspector the smoking unit. It's small, it's, um, it's 10 square feet. Um, and in, in our discussion about, well, how do we deal with the smoking issue? Um, how do we put something on it? But it's also a propane unit. It's 80,000 BTUs. So, what, and I have pictures I gave to Michael, but it kind of looks like a big coffin on wheels. You can tell it. Um, it's about six feet long. The cooking area is 10 square feet. Um, so what's heating that is the propane. There's a B-shaped trough that runs the length of it. It slides out. We put our soaked wood chips in there and generally don't reload it. Uh, when smoking meets two or three hours really imparts that smoke, especially if it's on like a whole pig, um, you don't really need it much more. In fact, sometimes you don't really want it because then it's like, wow, this is really, really smoky. And you just want it smoky. You want it that good flavor. Um, but we will talk with Jackie, and um, I've spoken with her before. I think she's great. And he said, what do you think? I said, I think she's firm but fair, and she does know her stuff. So no problem with working with her. Um, and boy, I hope we do have a parking problem, right? <laughs> um, I think there will be some walking traffic. Um, and I've been over Michael's house at all different hours of the day. Um, they are pretty strict on enforcing that parking thing. If someone attempts to park there on that wrong side, they will come and ticket. They don't tow unless it's a snow thing. Um, but it's pretty clear that even if you tried parking on the other side, even another car can't get through. It's a fairly narrow street. Um, but I think it's something where uh, we're communicating with the customers and as people come in, we explain it to them like, this is where we'd rather see you. Or by the way, we have these, uh, I say start with four spots like you might vote on, and then if there's a problem, maybe increase to six and work something else out with the landlord. Um, one of the greatest things about East Hampton is that we're not pulling change out of our pocket all the time to park. Um, and in saying that, I'm comparing it to Northampton, um, so I don't agree with all their parking rules. I think it will be okay, um, but I think with the access to the lot, or maybe there's a deal that could be struck with Mike Supernop from Big E's to say, hey, this is only, um, four nights after five till about 10, and maybe a Sunday brunch, you know, could I rent the farther park of the part of the parking lot and relate that information to my customers? Because uh, Mike is a great guy, he does a lot for this community. Um, so it wouldn't be right to just say, oh, well, you can park over there, but maybe there's something that we could do to work with him to work that out um, without Michael having to spend a lot of money um, in doing so. So I just had those couple of things, I was taking little notes, so I hope that helps. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? Mm -hmm. Comments? You looking for a motion? I guess it looks like, I just want to clarify, I'm not yet making a motion. Uh, looks like uh, we had two potential stipulations. Uh, one was that the applicant lease four lots on what street? Help me so that I can word this correctly. It's the parking lot Union Court. Union Court. Do we want to be that specific? Uh, well, where I, it is. I mean, I think yes. we can. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was actually going to probably pull up the parcel ID number and put it in the decision. Okay. So I won't clear. be able to throw that into the motion, so no, hopefully you'll have it. Okay. So I'm just going to work that one condition out, all right, and then yeah. I'll put it in the motion at the end, so if that's okay. You're going to have um, a comedy yeah. The applicant will lease. Um, Here you are. Look at the language. Yeah, yeah that's great. Right. Well, we're going to specify the exact block. The applicant shall lease four off-street parking spaces from specific lot. Fill in copy uh, It looks like it's lot 52-67. Okay. 3743 Union Street. And make patrons and tenants aware of the availability of the spaces. Can you repeat that? Yeah, repeat that again, please. I guess it's not tenants anymore, right? Because we're not doing that. Yeah, you're right. So make patrons. Yeah. The applicant shall leave, lease, excuse me, four off-street parking spaces. Hold on. Shall lease four off-street parking spaces at Union Court. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At Union Court. And make patrons aware of the availability of the spaces. There's a little bit more we're adding here. Hold on. Tell me when you're ready. Of it's a process. Sorry. <laughs> and make patrons aware of the availability, availability of spaces of, of off, spaces. off street parking spaces. Okay. Next sentence. Okay. Evidence of the lease 
shall be submitted to the Planning Board and Building Department as a condition of the Certificate of Occupancy. Evidence of lease agreement shall be provided to Planning Department and Building, building Department. department. As a condition um, of the Certificate of Occupancy. As a condition of the CO. I just so you're aware, I never I never sign off on COs. So is that an irrelevant? I, I'm just saying cost? that it it could go to the building department and he could do a CO and I would never know. So he should we just say planning board? He wouldn't look at the at the special permit or the. Site I mean, he approval. would, but I'm. But I would I would hope that he would, but I'm. What I'm just saying is there's no <coughs> sign off for the planning department on right. a oh, so on a CO, on building permits I have to sign off on them before they can even be granted. And they need. I need to make sure that whatever they're showing Joe is what they got approved for. So but with a CO, I don't see anything. She's not going to look at it. What's the point? I mean, you could still put it in there, and, and, and we could stick the, it in the file. Well, to give it to the <laughs> building department. At least you have something in there, and we could leave it. Then uh, emit, omit planning board, and leave evidence of the lease shall be submitted to the building department as a condition of the certificate of occupancy. Or equally, he's not going to know what that. He's he's not. I mean, Let's I would say leave it with the. Time. I say leave it as is, and then that way, it goes into the planning board we'll file, file, and we have it on file. So if there's ever a question, if there's okay. ever a complaint about parking, mm -hmm. we have a copy of the lease agreement in our files. It's like having a backup system. If yeah. Joe can't find it, at least I could find it. Right. Okay. So we leave. Okay. It. All right. So we have one condition down. We have a second condition. And that's that the applicant shall comply with the Board of Health regulations and requirements and obtain all needed licenses and permits, which of course you have to do regardless of this, Absolutely. but it just makes us okay. feel comfy and sleep well. So the applicant <laughs> shall comply <laughs> with... The applicant shall comply with the Board of Health regulations and Board requirements. Board of Health regs and... And obtain all needed licenses and permits. And, ob and, and obtain well. all... Proper. I'm what sorry. Did you say? All yeah. needed licenses. Yes. All needed. Yes. All needed licenses and permits. And okay. Permits. All right. Any other conditions anybody feels the need to add? Just the house. I think we've covered it all, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I motion to, <coughs> to approve the site plan for Five Chapman Ave with the two aforementioned conditions. <laughs> Can I get a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You opposed, Chet? Yep. Okay. So 3 1? Yes. Are you, you're voting too? Yeah. All right. 4 1. 4 1. Okay. Uh, Motion uh, passes. All right. So, written decision, what? So, um, I have 14 days to draft the decision and then since it's a site plan approval there's no appeal period so you're good to go after the decision stamped at the city clerk yep. all right thank you very much best luck guys do well and just just to make you aware I'm, i am going to give a copy of your your this to the health department so that she has it prior to you going to see her okay What's the matter? All right. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. All right, moving on to old business, the sign ordinance. Okay. Oh. Is that yours? I think it is. No, I have an extra right. one. Okay. I got it, honey. I got it. I think that one's okay. down here for a while. No, no, I got it, and I... So there should be a draft right in front of you somewhere. I put it in your seat. Okay, so where are we at? Okay, so I started to populate um, the outline that we talked about last time. Um, so we'll just walk through this bit by bit here. So section 10.02 applicability, I eliminated out of doors. So that's now removed. Under definitions, I'm just starting to put words and terms that I'm coming across when I'm drafting it that I think need to be defined. So I haven't put a definition in there yet, but I'm just placeholding them so I remember to put something in there. And that'll continue to grow. And that'll can continue to grow, and then we can work on what those definitions are over time. So awning, 
uh, awning sign, standing sign, wall sign, and the window sign. We agreed to that language from Wellesley, and I put that in there. And now I have a question about that. Of course, I'm, of course I'm, you do. <clears throat> I get to put on my lawyer hat and think of ways around these things now. Yes. So I'm curious if we want to limit, uh, that we came up with that awesome one foot exception of things that aren't attached. Yeah, yeah. But when I read this, that's only for the illuminated signs. Would you agree that that's how this reads? And or. And or any illuminated sign installed inside the building within one foot. Mm. We want it to cover all of them, right? Like I think if it's a, a, like a cardboard sign that's hanging, you know, six inches inside a window, it's still sure. a sign, right? Yep. All of which must be no. So I'm wondering if we want to move that phrase into like any sign attached, painted, or otherwise similar to fixed directly to the glass surface of a door or window. Within one foot. Either inside or the... Within one foot of the glass surface of a window or door. Yeah, either, either inside, inside or, or outside, outside the, the building, building. Including any illuminated sign. Okay, well, I don't know if we need to have the illuminated sign in there. I mean, it, it, no, that would be I a think sign, you're right. right? Yep. Um, so maybe we, we just take out section? illuminated sign. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so any sign attached, painted, or otherwise similarly affixed directly to the glass surface of a window and door within one foot. Wait, no, we got a better solution here. What if you just cross out any illuminated sign? So it says your definition and or installed inside the building within one foot of the glass. Any sign, uh, yeah. either inside this foot. Uh, there we go. Within one foot of the glass surface of a window door. Any illuminated sign is the only three words you're Yeah, speaking. I think that, that covers it. Oh, so keep installed within the building. Oops. All right. Any illuminated sign, that's it. That Any sign sense. attached, painted, or otherwise similarly affixed directly to the glass surface of a window or door, either inside or outside the building. And or installed inside the building within one foot of the glass surface Keep of a window that. or door. And or installed inside the building within one foot of the glass surface of the window or door and designed to be visible from the exterior of the structure. I think that covers it. Okay. Sounds like a window sign to me. Good job. Why is it going to be within a foot? Yeah, no, it's just going to Because... Because it can be six inches. Because you can't inch, regulate... Well, we could make it closer. I mean, we were trying to think of how close to a window you could hang a sign Especially that's meant to be a sign that's visible outside. Well, if you're walking right. on a sidewalk and look inside the building, it could, it could be you know, just over the surface, only a couple of inches. Well, I think it's within one it's foot. It's within, yeah, it's one so foot So if it's one inch, <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything up to a foot. All right. The foot within. being the maximum. Yeah. We don't want to make it like six feet because then you're regulating the inside. Yeah. Then it's like a sign that. that's sitting on the counter or something right. like that. Okay. So if a person puts up a sign and it's six inches from the window, that's still okay. That's still it's, okay. It's covered it's by covered. this yeah. definition. It's okay. regulated. Think of like CVS. Yeah. So when yeah. you go to that's CVS, right. they have all of that signage that's in the windows that's facing out. Right. And all of and the it's combined. it's like hanging. It's not even attached to the window. It's it just like hangs a banner. like three inches in. Yeah. Right. We're right. going to get those inside the statue. Boom. <laughs> At least in our very rough Mr. draft, Lord. that's. <laughs> you haven't tell them about it. No, I'm gonna be challenging it. We'll be all right. <laughs> okay. All right. So then, <coughs> mostly what I kind of focused on was the administrative side yeah. of this, um, and I kind of bounced around a little bit. So there's some holes, but um, so this is basically the application process. And we have agreed to being filed in the office of the, oh, it says inspector, I think it's got to say commissioner. Um, okay, so an application for a sign permit may be made at the same time as an application for a building permit. When a building permit is not required, a sign permit may be issued in conjunction with an application for a certificate of occupancy. What's about the word may there? that you may get it at the same time as a building permit. Can you also get it any other time? You can You can come get us. So you could get it at any time, really. Yes. It's, um, but you're going to, if you're a new business, say you're a downtown business or you're renting a downtown spot, you, uh, you want to do renovations. So you're getting a building permit because you're adding a bathroom or you're taking down walls or something. Um, or if you don't need to do that, you're just looking to have a CO and you want to get, you want to change the sign because you don't want the old business to sign there. So it would be in conjunction with so that. So is this, I know you like to design these so that it's like a new business in town gets to know what they're doing. Are you saying to them, you can, 
piggyback these two things together. Like that's Pretty the much. idea. You, but you don't have to, right? You don't have to. If you don't know what your sign's going to be and you get your special permit or whatever, you can then come and just get a sign permit because now we know what our sign is. Right. That makes, now I understand. Or you can do it at the same time. It'll be part of it. Right. Or a CO. Right. It's also trying okay. to make it more efficient for the building inspector to some extent too so that he's not reviewing multiple you know what I mean? And like he it, liked this, right? Didn't he, he reply liked it. all he the email? He replied all <laughs> the emails. Yeah, so, he, that, yeah. so, I mean, that's a that's a good sign since he's the one who's going to be that's administering That's what I told it. him. I needed yeah. him to look at it before the meeting. So. Yeah. Um, and then this is all new. We, I mean, there's been, there was stuff in the old ordinance about some things that needed to be submitted, but this makes it really clear. Yep. So if for standing signs, it has to have a location plan or a survey showing the property upon which the subject sign is to be located, the proposed location of the subject sign on the property, the distance of the proposed sign from the subject property's boundaries, and all existing structures on the building on the subject property, all such plans shall be to a legible engineer's scale. Now what does, does that, that mean? That yeah, means don't show up with a hand-drawn, out-of-scale plan. Is that a common term, a parlance? Or? Yes. Okay. You find it in zoning that, okay. you know, plans plans drafted by an engineer, architect, landscape architect. Um, you know, it's got to be to scale. You can't have somebody coming in saying, well, my, my building is here and I want to put the sign here and I think about from here to here is maybe around 10 feet because then the scales are all off and he can't really tell. Mm. And so the boundaries, does it just I think, have to are be to here. scale, or does it have to be professionally done? Like, does it need it to be? It just has to be to scale, and somebody okay. can do that on a home. Okay. A so, home like, computer. this gentleman here, if he wanted to have a sign in his front yard, he doesn't necessarily need to hire an architect to do no. professional drawings. No. It just has to show the distances and, and be to scale. Right. Okay. And he can hand. You can hand draw that too. Right. It's not saying you don't. You know, it just. It's has just got to be to scale. It just so has to be scale. Right. right. Would it be? I, I'm not quite certain. I, I have to admit too that stood out to me. Like I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> Um, and we have this section of definitions, and it's really, is that the kind of the thing we might throw in there, a legible engineer? Could, could that go in definition to help other um, people like me that hadn't had a clue? And then are going to say, what does this mean? I'm going to ask you. Um, no. I, I see it that seems like no. it, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a goofy thing to put in there a little bit, because yeah. if, if you're in land development, okay. you know what a scale is. Mm. Um, I think where it may be confusing is for the is for somebody like him who right. doesn't have any I mean to scale I would have understood but to a legible engineer scale that uh, like I don't know what that is well and, we can take is, out the legible engineer and just say well, the, such plans shall to, be to, shall be drawn to scale okay and I don't want to lessen your good work legible engineer I, think I stole it don't, I didn't come up with <laughs> it drawn to scale is more because I like your general philosophy of being written for you know five Chapman app like so that somebody doesn't need to know what they're doing before sure. they read this so maybe just like such plan should be drawn to scale she'll be drawn to scale Love it. probably conveys that information okay so that'll be <coughs> the same that's for all, all of them. them right yeah. yeah that's mentioned all the way down through the whole five yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah we have architect next <laughs> is there a difference yeah, take that part okay. out it doesn't matter now yeah I want a scale. Is there a developer scale? Yeah. I'll bring a scale to the meeting. <laughs> it's like a try. It's a ruler that has three sides. Right. As long as and we're it has a different a scale on each side. Yeah. So, one to ten, one to twenty, one to thirty. Yeah. All right. Okay. So for all signs, dimensional drawings of the sign, including lettering, borders, proposed color scheme, which maybe we shouldn't have in there because some of the stuff that I've been reading yeah. about First Amendment rights is mm. even colors can't be regulated. Mm. Um, but it's not saying that it's, it's not saying he's going to deny it. He just wants to know what it's going to look like. And so it's maybe not it's regulated okay. by color, but the color itself may create, like we we're talking about, like color can sometimes be a safety concern or something like that, right? Like right. if you have a sign that's shaped and looks like a stop sign, right. but it's blue, that right. might be acceptable, whereas a red one next to a road wouldn't. All you're saying here is we're not telling we you what color it. you can do. It just has to be legible. So yeah. just have to, right. so, I think that's valid. Okay. Height and other design elements, such drawings shall be drawn to scale. Perfect. Uh, for wall, awning, or window signs, a dimensional drawing or photograph of the facade indicating the placement of signs, the area of the facade of the business establishment, and the height of the sign, such drawings shall be drawn to scale. Color photographs of the property, including all buildings in the proposed sign location, and for all signs requiring a special permit, 
a copy of the decision from the Zoning Board of Appeals indicating approval of the special permit. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So permit fee, I scratched out City Council because I found in the existing signed ordinance that the fees are set by the Building Commissioner with approval from the Mayor. Okay. So that's from our existing. Um, processing time permit issuance, the Building Commissioner shall process and complete the accurate signed permit applications within 30 days of the Building Commissioner's receipt of a complete application and upon remittance of the appropriate fee. Do we need... And, and accurate. I don't understand what that's doing there. Shall process and complete and sure. accurate. Uh, is that supposed to be and accurate, or should it just probably be, and accurate? But should it just be shall process? And it's probably a typo because I had a I was reading. Or and process typing. any complete or a complete and accurate sign permit. Let me let me check the ordinance I stole. Where from. you stole it from? Hold on. A complete and accurate. Right. Ah, uh, where is it? What if it just says shall process? All signed permit there. applications <laughs> within 30 days of the receipt of a complete application. Yeah. That would be better. If it's complete, it's got to be accurate. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, where am I at? Number three. So process and complete. Processing all. time. Processing well, I don't even think you need to do and complete. I mean, no, I. I so yeah, process yeah. I, messed, all I messed around with it, so hold on. Uh, yeah, process and complete. That's easier. So, so it shall Jessica, be, what shall if it just says shall process all, all signed permit applications within 30 days of the building commissioner's receipt well, of a complete application? Gotta, it already says complete oh, application. Oh, okay. Shall one. process all, all, all signed. signed permit applications within 30 days of the building commissioner's receipt of a complete application. And, and a, the appropriate free fee. And that's not plural on application there. The appropriate fee. Okay. All right. Application rejection resubmission. The building commissioner shall reject any application that is incomplete, that contains false material statements or omissions, or that is assigned which would violate any standards within the section within 30 days of receipt of said application. Failure to act, if no signed permit has been issued within 30 days after the application has been made, it shall be deemed to be denied, which is kind of opposite of what we normally do. What we do. typically do, yeah. but, are, I mean, or we it's could just flip a it. sign ordinance, it's not. We could flip it the other way. Well, but, I mean, I'm just trying to make sure that we have discretion to deny it by an action, right? Like, like, I think the statute for the zoning stuff, like the special permits and things, we can't. Right. But this isn't under any of those statutes, so I think we can set the default as denial. I stole it from somebody. Yeah, and I'd rather deny than approve by inaction. Is that in general or <laughs> just in, in, life, in life? <laughs> 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 but, then you wouldn't do anything all day. You just sit around, sit around and go denied. Well, I mean, I, for the sign ordinance uh, part five, all you I do agree. is check off I'll denied. go no further. <laughs> I mean, do people feel differently? Do we, I mean, no, it's, it's if we don't do, if, if if the building department doesn't do anything for 30 days, do we want the sign to be approved, or do we want that to be considered a denial and they have to? I think it should be approved. This guy can't get off his buns and uh, get it get it uh, taken care yeah, of. Yeah, and that, that would be bad. his fault, not the applicant's exactly. fault. Exactly. So that would be approved. Or if he's hit by a bus. Then, what, what, I mean, what, what <laughs> then if there's got to be someone what if he to didn't take his space. because he found a piece that was incomplete in the application. Would that require him to say denied and make you restart the process? Or what if he went to you and said, I just need to get this information? It, he actually has to reject it if it's incomplete. He has to if it's okay. incomplete. I well, guess. Then, then it, I'm tending to agree with you too, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. if he doesn't act, it's approved. Okay. All right. Sure. All right. You know, Gee, I have thanks. to say that. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a Gee, huge thanks, deal in the Jimmy. way. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Thanks for the endorsement. <laughs> Should it be determined that the sign permit was issued in error and or pursuant uh, to an application yeah. containing false information or omission or a yeah, sign true. not meeting the standards of the section, the building commissioner shall revoke said permit and the subject sign will be immediately removed. Yeah. Jesse's right about the pluralization of omissions. Yeah. Yeah. False I'm, information or omissions. Yeah. Can we back up to number three real quick? <laughs> James had I just, another plural. I just, I just wanted to make sure you caught that pluralization uh, where it said the, the last sentence there. Well, I guess it's all one sentence. But it says, of a complete application. I took it out. I took, okay. I took the S out. All right. yeah. Thank you. 
Um, like I said, I was sort of, <laughs> yeah, I you know, under you. the gun on this <laughs> one. <laughs> so I'm sure there's tons I of typos. I think that's right. If, I mean, <coughs> issued an error is kind of a broad right. brush where you've, it, conceivably that could be building department error and now you're taking somebody's sign down, but. Um, but that's, but that happens that's now. That's sort of the way it goes. Well, for instance, if there's, there was a not, there was a case recently in the building department CBA mm -hmm. where the building inspector um, provided misinformation to the applicant. The applicant went ahead mm. and then he called them out on it in terms of being a violation of the zoning code. And they came back and said, but you said that we could do this and it, it doesn't matter. Even if it's an error, the zoning code is the zoning code and that's what holds, so. It doesn't matter? There isn't like a waiver argument or anything? The ZBA didn't buy it. Maybe need better lawyers. You're talking, about that, you're talking about that lady with that fence? That's pretty tough. Yes, I was, trying not to, yeah. I was trying not to bring it up, but I was thank at you, that, Harry, I was at that putting it on the public night. record. Yes. I was at that, that meeting that night, and that ZBA that night, uh, if I had anything to do with that. Careful, oh, careful you're on, you're on public I, I would have somebody to look into it. All right. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so, okay, that's good. We, we, um, expiration. Okay, expiration date. A signed permit shall become null and void if the work for which the permit was issued has not been completed within a period of six months from the date, date the permit was issued, provided, however, that the building commissioner may, in his or her discretion, issue extensions covering a period not to exceed one year from the date of the original permit. How, how so basically, that? it's another six-month extension. What, what does that extension look like? It's, it has, it's they decide what they want to issue it, but is it a written extent? I mean, how, what is that? I don't know how they. I don't know how they do <coughs> their paperwork. I would presume that there would be some documentation saying that they have an extension. So, yeah, if, if someone were to call you on it after seven months, they'd have to prove that they have an extension. Or Probably. Oh well, yeah. Okay, so all the other stuff was skipped mm -hmm. for now. Yeah. I went down to enforcement. Mm. The building commissioner is hereby authorized to enforce all the provisions of this section. I didn't get to the maintenance and removal, abandoned yeah. signs, dangerous defective signs, or removal of signs yet. So I just kind of jumped into the appeals process because this has been. This is the interesting one here. Well, this is the yeah. one that, I mean, I believe that everybody should have some form of relief, but right now it's so arbitrary yeah and is it's this not arbitrary i mean that's i Doesn't mean that's this just look like the zba can give a sign to anyone they want well this is what i think where we need to talk yeah. about is you know do we want it to be like how do we want the findings to be and so so i was thinking we may want to <coughs> hold this or think about this yeah. because as we go through i think you know for example the mills have always come to the ZBA looking for relief from the sign ordinance because the signage that they want to put on because based on the scale and the mass of those buildings in comparison to one another warrants them to have a huge sign like Eastworks does right. that you can see from the street because it matches the scale if you hold them to the same standard as any other <coughs> business in the mill industrial district so you know do we then just provide know what those potential reliefs are and make sure right. we have language in there that addresses that and that this is really for almost kind of like a variant situation. That's exactly what I was thinking. Or, you know, or do we leave this a little bit more wishy-washy? So I think that's sort of where we I need guess to we like see where we come with the guidelines, but my thought is that, I mean, we've talked about this, there have been so many exceptions to the sign ordinance that that tells you the sign ordinance needs to be fixed, right? right. And that you should put that in there. So like if we know things like the mill buildings, we can designate in signs into this ordinance. And my thought is that there's got to be something unique relating to, you know, the structure of the land or something like right. a variance that makes it, it an exception as opposed to just being like, well, my sign's really cool and it, and it doesn't, right. and the neighbors don't mind. Right. right. Like that's basically what this says is like, my neighbors don't care and, and the sign otherwise would be cool and it doesn't, you know. Well, except it does talk about the scale, which I thought was good. That it's, that it's got to be, in, and again, that I don't like that term reasonable. But reasonable relations. I don't like that because it's really arbitrary. So. Right. Um, All right. So maybe we set the whole appeal process aside until we figure out how. I don't know. I mean, some of the things that. You know, I, under number two, I didn't know where we wanted to go. Where, what is the circumstance that you can actually ask for relief? And I think that's really important question and kind of what you're getting to, Jesse, is that is it, is it 
any time that the building inspector denies your permit, can you then go to the ZBA? Kind of like, like a sp like, like a, a special, special permit, permit or right. a, a building decision. You know, um, that there's an appeal process for that decision. Is it? You know, what is it for? Like, right. what's the circumstance that will allow you to go to a, get a special permit? And then I think that from there, then we can sort of start talking about the details. Oh, I hate to throw a kinker in here. You do not, John. <laughs> well, no, I've, my wife and I, we go out on sometimes on Sundays and drive around and I see different things. What about uh, movable signs? We'll get there. That's definitely We're, one of the definitions. Yeah. Is that going to be part of it? Yes, yeah. it's in the outline. Right. It's in there. We just we're not dealing with the regs of the signs quite yet. We haven't got there yet. You should see the ones they have out but there. I, it is my inclination a is to mess. try and give her something so we can try to refine it a little more each time. Yeah. Rather than bypassing it, I, I, I mean, it's tough, but I kind of like the idea that that. You know, you have an appeal process after you've been denied. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that it requires much more than that in terms of the criteria for, you know, what. How you get in front of the ZBA? Yeah. Right. In terms of what the ZBA then looks for, you know, that. We need well, to I'm just thinking. Down I mean, a bit more, but. In general, it's still just going to be Jessica, a regular. Like, can't you appeal any building inspector's decision to the ZBA? Yeah, I guess you can. Right. So, so it like, doesn't matter. So that's irrelevant. So you can. So, so I think that. They'll sort of be able to get in front. I mean, I don't imagine like a flow of, you know, 15. That's the concern, right? Is that you're going to have 15 sign appeals every night and the right. idea is going to be bogged down. But I don't think that's going to be the regular course of business. Well, then, doesn't it cost the individual some cash to get into front of the ZBA? Yeah, right? Yeah, building inspector appeal. Yeah, a fee. What, what does that cost? A hundred bucks or something like that? I don't think it's that high, is it? Just like, what does that cost to get in front of the ZBA? For uh, a building inspector appeal. Uh, it's cheaper than special it's like permits. Forty I wanna, bucks or something. No, isn't? it's more than that. I want to say it's like seventy-five. Oh, yeah. So, but we don't really want to use that expense. as the barrier to an appeal, right? Yeah, I no. mean, it's no. No, if a person wants to appeal, they got to pay the fee. But, but I think I think they can just by right appeal the building inspector's decision anyway. I, I I'm inclined to go with you, Jim, is that you. If you want to come to the ZBA and say that they made a mistake, you can. But if we create a very strict guideline for when you can grant relief, then a frivolous appeal will be heard. It will just be rejected. It's exactly. Right. I feel like that's the way to proceed with that's, it. We got to give so, them fun so, things sorry, to run work with. Again. So that it's. I mean, it's basically a by right appeal. That yeah. any time you're denied, somebody can appeal to the ZBA and. But we're they can do put that off, anyway. Right. But we're going to put off the hard part of setting the standards for the ZBA to grant a special permit till another day. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to do that part. But the no, idea totally being okay. that you, you do have a, an appeal you by have, right, have and if right, it's yeah. frivolous, then you just won't, if you don't meet the requirements, you'll just get rejected. And right. I think that even though you're right that it happens automatically, for the sake of making it understandable to someone reading this, it's, it's good to kind of mention that they have that, that right. Yeah, but if we put it down in the right wording, the ZBA will have a, an easier task to deny. That, I mean, that's what we, that's a, we I think a right. chore for another day. But yeah, we do need to figure out what the standard's gonna be for now, a special permit. Now one last piece with regard to, so we're saying it's, and I like your way of saying it by right. Uh, you mentioned here a deadline for filing for mm -hmm. their appeal. Mm -hmm. um, like right now, there's a, if there's an appeal, there's a 20 day appeal period for a special permit. Mm -hmm. That's typical for special permits that the planning board and the ZBA grant. Because if it's five years ago, it doesn't qualify anymore. So if we don't set a deadline, we're allowing these kinds of things. Right. To I think you definitely need to set some sort of appeal timeline. Right. Well, we should probably also look at what the standard appeal of building inspector's decision limit is, right? Because you can yeah. generally just appeal that. Uh, yeah, because But I, mean, I don't know if that's every standard. decision. I know that. Like the ZBA deals with that appeals from building inspectors' decisions, but I don't know if it's like a global appeal of anything they decide. All right. So I'm still confused. And so, what is the circumstance that somebody can seek a special permit from the ZBA? But if it's denied. Only if, if it's it, denied. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, when else would you? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah. Uh, anybody, anybody who's denied. I'm just looking at some of our well, other examples here, and I've got one here that says, right to appeal, any applicant for a permit 
any person who has been ordered by the building inspector to incur, incur an expense in connection with a sign or any person aggrieved by... I was going to say, you might want to appeal if you're challenging a sign and, they, and the building inspector allowed it. So, so it's, not just the, it's not just the person who's putting up the sign, but it's right. anybody else could appeal the decision to. Right, right. I hadn't considered that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, in which yeah, case... really be careful with the wording. In which case, it's... Uh, any, uh, I would change it, and this is, I'm throwing this out here, any um, awarded sign permit can be appealed within the deadline for filing this from the granting point of the, of the permit or the denial. I think you can be like even broader and just say like any aggrieved party may challenge any building inspector's decision with respect to a sign permit or something like that. I mean, make it as broad, I don't yeah. know, I mean. So you have, and I'll just use 20 days for now, we still have to hammer that down, but you have 20 days uh, to issue an appeal uh, for a denial or approval or approval. approval. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay, I'm just here's a here's one from Belchertown. Any person having an interest in the sign yep. or the property may appeal the determination of the building commissioner ordering removal or compliance by filing a written notice with the town clerk within 30 days. Does that person have to be a resident? In other words, if a resident doesn't like that sign, they can appeal it? It didn't say well, resident, it said any person. The, any I mean, that's, person, right. <laughs> that's the question, right? So, like, I mean, Having you, can, an interest in you can sort of yeah. see both oh, sides, right? Like, as a resident of East Hampton, you know, if we're going to, if, if the building inspector approves and Nini is putting up a 40 by 20 foot neon sign, I should be able to challenge that. On the other side, it's not my property, I don't own a business, and I'm not in a butter, so... I don't know. I kind so of the, so. So here's what we know for sure. So the trigger that's point when your is the comes issuance in like is the issuance of a sign permit or the denial of sign permit. Right. One of those is the trigger of the time at which the either deadline one, right. begins. Yeah. And the people that can appeal are either the person awarded the sign permit or a resident. Anybody can appeal. The question is whether they have standing in the courts, and that's for the courts to decide, not the planning board. Right. In my opinion, right? Well, Jesse, unless I mean, we're appeal, I mean, we're setting up an appeal process to the ZBA, though. So we're ZBA. deciding standing for, I mean, so that's the whole point. So yeah, if yeah, we yeah. say, we could say any applicant or a butter or owner, or we could say any resident, or we could say anybody. I mean, we, you could. I prefer the resident. one. Right. I mean, if so, <coughs> there are plenty of, pro, there are plenty of business owners owner. that don't live in East Hampton. Right. So you can't right. say resident. Okay, that's fair. So you that's could fair. say applicant, owner, or resident. Right. Which which eliminates a concerned area resident who's not a citizen of East Hampton. Mm -hmm. Applicant, owner, or resident of East Hampton. Of East Hampton. I mean, that's kind of... Because Pride Stores comes in here and they apply for a sign permit. Yeah. Sure. You know, they're, they're an applicant, they're not based here. Do you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. I mean, that also gives one other condition, and what if it's that same person who then wants to challenge someone else's sign. They're not a resident here, but they do business here. So. Right, that, that's a good point, right? So if you, if you uh, my Nini sign, I just grabbed them out of my head, but if you're, you know, the next door business and you are not a resident, you wouldn't fall under that definition. You wouldn't, no, so you couldn't. Which is, and I want them to, you know, what I don't want is someone who's visiting from, you know, pick some place, Australia, and, and says, well, I don't like that sign to, to start a process, and, you know. <laughs> well, they'd have to be here during the, two, the 20 days Which after. may be maybe why that's the language. Any person who has been ordered by the building inspector, or by the building, never mind, to incur expense in connection with the sign. Like, I'm thinking, you know, the 40 by 20 foot sign goes in next to my building, and all of a sudden I have to spend money to do something different to my sign. Yeah, but you haven't been ordered to incur no, the expense. You haven't been ordered. I think that's to get the building owner or the applicant, right? So it's like I have to put up the sign even though I didn't right. I don't own the building. My I mean my think the people that are involved are the, the, the sign owner, a resident, or someone who does business in the community, but I don't know how to word that last part. Well that's gonna be pretty broad, right? So I mean you yeah, could be could do business in the community. Yeah. I could be driving through from my house yeah, in Florence and going to Dunkin' Donuts. I've done business in East Hampton. Well, and I mean, is that so? The question is, would you rather eliminate a local business who has a concern about it but is owned by a non-resident, or would you rather include a non-resident who's concerned about the sign that was just approved? I don't know how much of either is really going to happen, but 
Yeah, I say just pick it and keep it to applicant, owner, and resident. All right, I gotta say something there. Please do, Harry. <laughs> All right, this doesn't this doesn't really pertain to this, but it's definitely signs. What if a sign becomes damaged? Can somebody We're make gonna, somebody repair? We have a, a dangerous yeah. or defective sign section. Please hold to the <laughs> to <a> future <laughs> meeting. It's oh, there's something going on in North Anthem right now with that Calvin sign. Yes. With, with that oh, AP yeah. oh, yeah. and, and you're really complaining that. over there. Yeah. <laughs> Would anybody have any teeth in the in the in the, in the fight? We can we can we can talk about that in section ten point oh eight three okay. when we get there. <coughs> and all we're trying to hammer out right now is just this it is just this part two of the ten yeah. eight five, which is mm. and, I, and I think we've got the two parts of it when it triggers, right? Right. Like, yep. That we have. Really? Are you comfortable with the trigger? The, the, I'm unclear. The, the, any building inspector's decision in response to an application, rejection or denial. Yeah. That, that's our trigger. I had any aggrieved party may appeal. I have only issuance or denial. Yeah. Right, okay. Those are the triggers. We still need a deadline time, and then we need who the aggrieved parties are. I'm inclined to go broad and just say anyone. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like... I agree with that. Yeah. It, all you're doing is you're getting a hearing in front of the ZBA about what's going to happen. Yeah. If you think it's worth it, you got to pay the money. Okay. I don't know. I mean... That's a good point. Uh, we uh, can, and this I'm is a classic convinced. example, right, where we can get input from the community because I don't yeah. know what people are going to be thinking. But I think it's a good place to start from. So I don't know where you want to draw that line. So maybe we just. Don't and I just draw think a line. you say everybody, and then I, I, I agree. I let them go through the process. Right. But don't deny somebody the right to have to go to, to have due process. And have a special right. permit. I'm convinced. Yeah. You know, everybody should have the right to due process, whether we think they have a right to have it or not. So and we've all thought of people in each of these classes that we were going to kick out that would have a valid claim, right? So I'd rather have some frivolous somebody who drives through from Westfield and files mm -hmm. a claim than. A business owner next door who can't. So yeah. Okay. So, so now we know who the who who the uh, appealing so. person can be. And the only thing we don't have is a deadline for filing. But we were going to check but on building check permit appeal deadlines yeah. first. Or what the language? I mean, I don't know if any decision by the building inspector can just be appealed by right already mm -hmm. or what. But we should certainly be consistent with that if it is. All right. So I'm going to use the language any person having an interest in. A sign for the you, property. Jessica, please. Wait, no, but there's mm -hmm. it's more Where than that because I think I'm it, in Belchertown. I'm I think an on. interest. I think having an interest in the sign isn't like I'm interested in it. I think having an interest in the sign is usually like a a State. legal investment, State. like a ownership or. So you want it even broader than that? Yeah, because so I don't think language. that gets a neighbor. I think anyone having give an interest. Language. Anyone. Yeah, I think anyone aggrieved by a building inspector's decision. All right, hold on. Anyone aggrieved. Can't spell. Grieved. Well, by, the building, a by the building commissioner's decision. Has the right to appeal. May yeah. appeal to the May ZBA appeal. within X days. You're going to come up with the a decision number. Is that question. what I'm hearing on that? Should, you're going to look. Think, I think. Yeah, we should try to figure out. Within X number of days of the issuance of the decision. And I, I like your idea of going with whatever the standard for the building commissioner already is, if they have a standard. Yeah. It's the issuance of the permit, because it's not a decision. Right? But it could be the denial, issuance or denial of the permit. Okay, I agree with that. Issuance of or denial. Issuance of the permit. Or denial of the permit. Or denial. Yeah, it can work either way. Okay. Within Anyone aggrieved by the building commissioner's decision may appeal to the ZBA within X number of days of the issuance or denial of the sign permit. Sounds good. Bingo, I feel like we've done something. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this going to be fun for? I'm still having fun. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Next Christmas, I'm not happy. <laughs> we got a piece of that done, and you did oh, a lot of work. I was going to say, near Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's not going to be so fun just at to, all. So just to wrap up here, so we're going to hold off the required findings, and we'll continue that discussion to the, another meeting. Yep. Yeah. And then just the miscellaneous provisions, these are very boilerplate, but they're also very important. Yep. Um, so basically the first one says if there's a conflict between this ordinance and any other ordinance, the provisions of the section shall still control provided they are consistent with state and federal law. And the severability, which if any section or provision of the section is found to be by a court of competent jurisdiction to be invalid, such invalidity shall not affect the validity of the other sections. Yeah, I think you're missing some language in there, but yeah. I mean, basically it's like 
you know, if this was, if Reed, if Reed v. Gilbert comes down again and says you can rule content or whatever it is, right. there's still sections that are valid even if the other sections are not valid. And that currently like doesn't exist in our current sign ordinance, what, what do you which think makes is me missing? nervous. I think the language, the the stuff after the comma there shall invalid sh shall invalidity shall not affect the validity. Oh, yeah. I think there's there's something there's something it. missing there. I'll find it. We have months to work on that, but yeah. months. Awesome, okay. Jessica. All right. So there so we are. So you're going to continue to just do this. We're going to do piecemeal fill in the blanks and, yeah. and march along. I think Don't it's great. Don't you think it, I think it works, works great. okay? It works really well, right? Love yeah, it. None of us want to I spend. think it's better that way. We don't want to have like a four-hour <laughs> marathon hearing where we no. do all this at once, right? No. This is great. <laughs> I look forward to the little yeah. of final all right. every two weeks. As you said, if it takes till Christmas. Yeah. Um, all right. Administrative <laughs> items. Master plan update. We wanted oh. it on the agenda. Does anybody have one to give or? Well, I emailed John. John Brenner. Brenner. Yes. And have not yet heard from him. I just emailed him this yeah. morning. So we'll just get back and have to be on. Okay. So All right. I emailed him this morning, and hopefully he'll get back to me with the time that I can hook up with him and pick up that information. Get I'll get it back to you. Excellent. Yep, he's a good guy. Any other administrative items, Jessica? No. Anybody else? No. Harry's got something. I got to give a retraction on the CPA thing. I said we got, no, I gave 25 grand to the uh, Islamic Trust over the bridge. Yeah. I got to retract that because they never applied for it. There's going to be a lot more than that, apparently. So they're, they're going to be coming down later on. I thought they were going to apply for that to be in this cycle, this funding cycle, yep. but they're not going to. They're waiting. Yeah, they're 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 there's, a lot, there's a lot more involved. All right. So it's going to be real expensive, I guess. They're talking about yeah, 100. Yeah, cool. super, super cash. Keep us posted. Yeah. So it should be interesting. All right. I motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. We're free Thank to go. You. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone.